Hi, I'm Frank Smithhuis from the Radiology Assistant, and today we're going to talk about an algorithm for ankle fractures. Ankle fractures are very common, and luckily most of these cases are not so difficult. Here, for instance, you see a clear fracture of the distal fibula on the lateral side. Some cases are a bit more difficult because they simply have more fractures than one on the lateral side as well as on the medial malleolus. Some cases show clear, unstable fractures with obvious widening on the medial clear space, as you can see here. But a couple of cases can be very difficult. We see soft tissue swelling on the lateral or the medial side, but we do not see any fracture or signs of instability. While this fracture is, in fact, an unstable ankle fracture. And that is where the algorithm for ankle fractures will help you. To properly assess fractures and predict instability, even in cases where no obvious abnormalities are seen. First, we need to know a little bit more about the Weber classification and the Laugahans classification. And once we know this, we can properly assess the algorithm. So the Weber classification takes a look at the fibular fracture compared to the level of the syndesmosis. So a Weber A fracture is below the level of the syndesmosis. A Weber B fracture is at the level of the syndesmosis with involvement of the syndesmosis. And a Weber C fracture is above the level of the syndesmosis. And it gets more difficult if this is above the level of the field of view of your x-rays, because then you cannot see the fracture. So in this case we've already seen, we see a transverse fracture through the distal fibula below the level of the anterior syndesmosis, so that is a Weber A fracture. In this case, we see an obvious oblique fracture through the distal fibula at the level of the syndesmosis, so this is a Weber B fracture, but this classification does not take into account any associated ligamentous injury or the other fractures which are seen in this case, for instance the medial malleolus fracture or the fracture on the posterior malleolus. So we can state that the Weber classification is super easy to use, and that's why it's so popular, but it does not take into account the other fractures or other ligamentous injuries. And it does not tell us whether the fracture is stable or not. And this is where the Laugahansa classification comes in. So in this classification, they fixed lower leg specimens on boards, and they applied a certain force in a certain direction until a crack was heard and they examined what kind of fracture had occurred in that angle. So in this classification they categorized a couple of subtypes in which these three are the, by far the most common. So we have the supination adduction, so the foot was in supination position and then an adduction force was applied. We have supination exorotation and the last subtype is pronation in which the foot was in pronation position and then an exorotation force was applied. So after we have defined the subtype of the Lauke Hansen classification, it gets more difficult because we have to properly assess the anterior syndesmosis and the malleolus tertius or the posterior malleolus in order to correctly grade this subtype. Hmm. So if you take a look at this, you can immediately see that it is complete, but it is also super difficult to use. And that's why you should do it over and over again. Luckily, the Weber classification and the Lauge Hansen classification have striking similarities. If we take a look at the fibular fracture and the Weber A fracture, it looks almost the same as in the supination adduction fracture, below the level of the syndesmosis in a transverse direction. Same accounts for the Weber B fracture and the supination exorotation fracture, or the Weber C fracture above the level of the syndesmosis and sometimes outside of the field of view of your X-ray. That is the same for the pronation exorotation fracture. So the algorithm should be used as follows. First, start with what kind of Weber fracture are we dealing with. Then we go to the subtype of the Lauge Hansen fracture. And after that, we have to confirm which stage of the Lauge Hansen fracture we're in. So in this case, we already saw it was a Weber A fracture. A Weber A fracture is the same as a supination adduction fracture. So make sure that we take a look at grade two, a fracture most of the time oblique in the medial malleolus, which is not the case. So this is supination addiction type one fracture. Next case, we see a clear fracture of the distal fibula at the level of the syndesmosis, a Weber B fracture. A Weber B fracture was a supination exorotation fracture. And in this classification system, the uh, fracture of the fibula is grade 2, so we know for sure that the anterior syndesmosis is injured. Now we're going to take a look at the higher grades of the supination exorotation injury, 
and we already can see a fracture through the medial malleolus over here. That is grade 4. So we know that the malleolus tertius or the posterior malleolus is injured and yeah that is true because we clearly see the fracture over here. So in this case luckily all the fractures are well seen. What we're dealing with is supination, exhortation, grade 4 injury. Next case. So this is a difficult one because we do not see any fibular fractures. So a Weber A or Weber B fracture is not present. Could it still be a Weber C fracture or a pronation exhortation injury? In that case, we have to take a look at the medial malleolus or the posterior malleolus, and then we can see a fracture over here. And that immediately means that we have to deal with a grade 4 injury, which is this unstable injury. Okay, let's take a look at the lower grades of this injury. And now we can see this small avulsion fracture on the medial side with soft tissue swelling. So yes, there is also injury on the medial side. Anterior syndesmosis has to be torn or injured. And now we're going to make an x-ray of the lower leg because we have predicted there's a higher fibular fracture, which in fact was the case. So a mesonerve fracture. So in this case, this is a pronation exhortation grade 4 injury. So next case. So the easy part is where we see the oblique fracture of the distal fibula at the level of the syndesmosis. So this is a Weber B or supination exhortation injury. So grade 1 should be present, anterior syndesmotic injury, which in this case is a osseous counterpart of that. Now it gets more difficult because we want to make sure that, that we do not have to deal with a grade 3 or a grade 4 injury. We do not see any fractures, but it could be that it's purely ligamentous, which we do not know. So at this point, we know that there's a supination exhortation grade 2, but maybe a grade 3 or 4 unstable injury. So these cases are very common, but also very difficult from a diagnostic point of view. So last case, we do not see a fibular fracture. Could it still be a Weber C or a pronation exhortation injury? Yes, that is possible. Okay. Let's start with grade 1, medial malleolus. We do not see a fracture, maybe some soft tissue swelling. Grade 2 cannot be assessed. Grade 3, still possible, high fibular fracture. Grade 4, posterior malleolus, not to be trusted at all. Could be fractured or not. We do not have a clear lateral view, so we cannot rule that out. Luckily, we made an x-ray of the lower leg because the possibility of a pronation, exhortation injury, so we for sure have a grade 3 injury, maybe a grade 4. So this is how the algorithm works. So first start with the correct Weber classification of the fracture. Then ask yourself which Lauga-Hansen subtype are we dealing with. So in a Weber A fracture it is a supination adduction injury, a Weber B fracture is supination exorotation, and a Weber C a pronation exorotation injury. This is where it gets difficult in which stage or which grade of the Lauga Hansen classification are we in. So here we have a lot of numbers. Please make a screenshot of this and it will help you in daily practice. In the future, we will make more videos about these subtypes, supination, exorotation, and pronation, exorotation injuries, and why they start on the lateral side or on the medial side. But in the meantime, go to radiologysystem.nl for more information. Thank you and good luck.